Hi everybody, today we're going to be learning about one of my favorite sorting algorithms and that sorting algorithm is selection sort. Now it's not my favorite sorting algorithm because it's fast or particularly efficient, quite the opposite. It's probably not even the top 10 of sorting algorithms to use to sort a lot of your numbers or values, but I like it because it's very simple. It's an easy to explain algorithm. The logic in many ways mimics how you and I would probably think about sorting values as well. So it's a nice one to get started with. And if you're not familiar with sorting algorithms in general, it's a great starting point to help set the foundation for looking at more complicated sorting algorithms that we'll be looking at further down the road. And so selection sort, the name kind of gives it away. It works by repeatedly selecting the smallest element from an unsorted collection of items. And once it finds the smallest item, it moves it to its correct position, which we'll call a sorted region or a sorted collection. We'll talk about those variations in a few moments. The two variations, speaking of which, we're gonna be looking at is the two collection variation of selection sort and the single collection variation of selection sort. And we'll talk about what makes those interesting and why we use one over the other by default in most cases. Now, before I get there though, I just wanna quickly highlight that if you want a comprehensive look at data structures and algorithms and all the various fundamentals that go into it, my best-selling book, Algorithms, Absolute Beginner's Guide, just what you need. You can find it in physical bookstores and in online stores in virtual form in Kindle, paperback editions, and any other editions that haven't been invented yet you know, you might be able to find it as well. So check those out. But getting back to our regularly scheduled programming, let's start our look at selection sort by looking at a two collection variation. And this is the easiest of the selection sort variations we're gonna be looking at because one collection will be our unsorted input and another collection will be our sorted output. Now that probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So let me go ahead and add some visuals to help highlight what this means. So here's our example. We have a collection of items, 45, 12, 1, 67, 23, 44, 8, 13, and 56. These numbers aren't in any sorted order. We wanna sort them. And so initially, they'll be in what we call an unsorted collection, and our sorted collection will be empty. It's just nothing there because nothing has actually been sorted. This algorithm has three steps. The first step is the select step. Find the smallest or largest, if you're saying on a sorting backwards, you want the largest item to be first. Find the smallest element in the unsorted collection. Second, we move this element that we found, the smallest element we found, and we move it to our sorted collection. And then we just keep repeating this process until there are no more elements in our unsorted collection. And so the following this algorithm, when we go back to our example, we have our unsorted collection. The smallest value here is one. There's no other value smaller than that. And so we follow step two, which is we move this number into our sorted collection because it is the smallest value it's gonna be sorted. And now we repeat. We go back to the first step, which is we find the smallest number in our unsorted collection. In this case, the number is eight. So we move eight into the sorted collection. And you can sort of start to see a pattern emerging here. All we're doing every time is finding the smallest value from the unsorted collection and moving that to the end of our sorted collection. And you can imagine that as we play this through, then 12 would be the next smallest value, then a 13, the next smallest value, and then I think 23, and so on. And this whole process will keep repeating until we have no more items in unsorted because we move the smallest item each time into the appropriate order in the sorted collection. The end result is we have a collection of sorted values and it's done by using two collections as part of it. Now, the two collection variation is great for explaining the basic behavior that sorting sort exhibits. It's not great from a performance point of view and we'll talk a little bit about that later. And this variation is typically not used when we talk about selection sort, when you see it read you know, in magazines or articles or books or online as part of algorithms, what we're often referring to is a single collection variation, which is the other variation of selection sort. And in this variation, instead of having one collection for unsorted values and another collection for sorted values, all the values for both sorted and unsorted are divided up and arranged in the same single collection itself. This sounds a bit, you know, almost like defying the laws of physics or, you know, whatever the equivalent would be in the algorithms world, but it does work. So we'll walk through how that looks. So in this case, we have another collection of unsorted values, 12, 34, 3, 10, 42, 99, 67, 50, 12, 68, 81. And what we're gonna do though is, because all these values are unsorted, we're gonna designate them 
as being part of an unsorted region. And by default, at the very beginning, every value will be considered unsorted. So the algorithm for being able to sort items in selection sort using the single collection, it varies a little bit from what we just saw earlier. There's still a select step. We find the smallest element in the unsorted portion of the collection. And instead of moving the element, we swap the element instead. We swap the smallest element we found with the first element in the unsorted region. And where you'll see later when we visualize it, this grows the sorted portion of the collection by one element. So by doing the swap, we now take our unsorted region and introduce a sorted region. And finally, we repeat the process until there are no more elements left in the unsorted region. This definitely needs a visual explanation. So let's get into it. So take the example from earlier. Step one, find the smallest value. In this case, the smallest value is three. Step two, swap this smallest value with the first item in our unsorted region, which means we swap it with the 12 that we see at the beginning. And once you make the swap, what we now have is our unsorted region and the place that three went into at the beginning of our collection is now the sorted region highlighted in yellow. And now we keep repeating this process. So now the smallest value in our unsorted region is 10. Now we swap it with the first value in our unsorted region. So now the 10 and the 34 swap places. And what you now have is uh, more elements in our sorted region, the three from earlier, 10 from right now, and fewer elements in the sorted region. And as you can now see the pattern as well, the whole process repeats. So next, the smallest value, well, it's 12, it happens to be the first value itself. When we swap it with the first item in the sorted region, we're kind of swapping it with itself as well, which is a no-op. But the important part is now our sorted region has now been expanded and our unsorted region has fewer items in it. And if we kind of speed this whole thing up, you'll see that with each step, we keep swapping items from the unsorted region with the first item in the unsorted region. And gradually, as you can see in the sorted region, the values are increasing correctly from smallest to largest. And at the end, if we speed it up even further, you'll see that with each swap, we're getting more and more items in the sorted region, fewer and fewer items in the unsorted region, and now we have a full sorted collection of items. Pretty awesome, right? So those are the two variations of how sort, selection sort works. Let's now look at the performance characteristics of it. You know, how quickly is this going to be running, depending on the size of the input that you have. So the way selection sort operates, it doesn't matter which variation we're looking at, whether it's a single collection variation or the two collection variation, we have to find the smallest value from our unsorted list of items. That means we scan the full list of items at each iteration to find the smallest item. Yes, the list of items will get will decrease as we have more and more items in our sorted you know, region and then fewer items in the unsorted region. But on average, we're scanning the list over and over again every single time for each element there is to find the smallest element, which means that all this iteration results in selection sort having running time of big O of n squared time. That means for whatever size of input you have, you take the square of that and that's the number of operations that it takes to sort all the items, which is not the most efficient sorting algorithm that we're going to be finding. From a memory point of view though, selection sort doesn't take up much memory beyond the extra objects we need for storing the input itself. As we saw earlier in the single collection variation, which is the default variation we'll see when selection sort is talked about, all the swapping and things are happening in the same collection you're currently in. There's no extra arrays being created, which means that you have a memory usage of constant value, which is big O of one. That is excellent. You know, really can't get too much better than that one. Now for completeness, even though we said selection sort by default is always going to be the to a, a single collection variation, there will be cases where you might have a two collection variation. And in that case, the only difference is that the memory taken up by the, the two collection variation will be big O of n or linear because you have one array for your input and you're taking up more memory for another array for your, for I, I said array, but you know, that's too implementation detail -y. For whatever collection you're using, you're gonna have two collections and that makes it linear, which is you know not great for most cases, but the performance of the running time of it stays the same, it's big O of n squared. Now, to learn how selection sort is implemented, I have both examples of the, the single collection variation and the two collection variation. Go to my selection sort tutorial on code.com because writing, showing JavaScript in like large chunks 
doesn't really make sense in a video, right? You know, you can't really select it, paste it and so on. So definitely go check out the tutorial, easiest way. Just go to Google, type in Krupa selection sort, and you'll see all of my articles relating to selection sort that, you know, that you can use to learn more about how to actually implement and test out how the algorithm works. So if I had to take many steps back, selection sort, it's cool. It's a good algorithm. It makes up the large number of sorting algorithms that are easy to understand, but not very fast. And that's okay because these kind of algorithms help give us an idea of how, when we are searching for things or sorting for items in a collection, how we would how would we represent that if a computer had to do the same thing? And that's one way of doing this. And selection sort is a great example. There's another algorithm called insertion sort, which we'll look at later, that also does a really good job here where it's easy to understand, not very fast, but very closely mimics how you and I would sort items as well. So it's just good to keep those algorithms in the back of our pocket, at least for knowledge sharing purposes at some point. Now, if you have any questions, learn data structures and algorithms, not the easiest of topics. Sometimes it's often hard to know who to ask or what to do. Best place to go is to forums at forum.crypto.com where I and others would be very happy to help you out. So just click the button, sign up very quickly, ask your question. A very good chance that I'll personally reply to your question itself. And before I wrap this up, I'd like to always just do a shout out to some common things you can do to be more up to date on the things that I create. So like, comment, and subscribe to be notified of new videos that I'll be making, sign up for the newsletter to get some updates in your inbox on various topics from technology to design to business. Follow me at Krupa on Twitter or X as we're calling it these days for bite-sized updates on whatever it is that I'm currently dealing with and, and fiddling with and experimenting with and so on. And lastly, check out my books. You know, they're available in not just the data structure and algorithms book, but I have other books as well, also in paperback and Kindle and other digital formats in real world bookstores and in online bookstores as well. Link to see all of this below in the description. And with that, I'll see you all next time.